Hi folks, welcome back to Dungeons and Dry Brushing. My name is Daniel. Today we're going to be starting a new series of videos. I'm kind of excited about it. In this series I'm going to be showing you my take on how to create the basic elements of a dungeon that you'll need for running encounters in Dungeons and Dragons. Now, I'm pretty lucky in that right now I'm in a position where I can afford a lot of the cool toys that you see YouTube creators and crafters using. 3D printers, airbrushes, hot wire tools, that kind of thing. But that wasn't always the case. And I still wanted to play D&D when that wasn't the case. So I think it's important that we make this hobby accessible to anyone who wants to do it. And that's part of the focus of these videos, is going to be showing crafting at different levels of budget, accessibility, and ability to make sure that anyone who wants to be included is. Now today I'm going to be focusing on making some doors for your dungeons. We'll be showing three different ways to do it. We'll be starting with paper craft, we're going to move on to foam craft, and then I'll show 3D printing. See you in a minute. We're going to start with our paper craft door. And this is pretty simple. I don't use a lot of print and paste techniques myself, but I know there are a lot of crafters who swear by them. The first thing you're going to want to do is find an image of a door and a stone texture that matches your dungeon motif. Once you have these, you're going to want to get them to scale. Now, this is going to depend on how you've constructed your dungeon tiles. For me, I like a 1 inch by 2 inch base on my doors, so start by making that and applying the stone texture to it. Then you're going to size the door to fit that. Print them both off on a standard home printer. The next step is gluing your printed door down to something that can give it a bit more rigidity. I've used tacky glue here, but PVA is fine if you don't mind the wait time for it to dry. I've chosen some thicker stock paper to paste these two, as I happen to have some in my craft material bin. You can get things like this from cereal boxes, oat boxes, all kinds of things like that, but if you don't have any on hand, any piece of cardboard will do. Once the glue is dry, you're just going to want to carefully cut around the doors. And when you're done with that, you're just pasting it all together. If the white exposed edge of the cardboard bothers you, you can always take a black marker and color it in just to draw the eye away from it. Now I'm sorry if the camera angles are a little awkward here, I'm still getting used to the new equipment and I'm just not used to working with a giant tripod between my legs. It's a fa family, uh, <clears throat> fa family friendly. Family friendly YouTube channel. That's what, <clears throat> that's what we do. Family friendly content. And there we go. Door one assembled completely, no problem. This type of simple paper craft is easy and cheap, but those are not its only advantages. I could make a dozen doors like this in no time at all, and if one gets damaged, bent, broken, someone's too rough with that at the table, who cares? These are easily replaceable, and you can also find all kinds of different doors and stones to express different motifs or easily change the theme of your dungeon without that much effort. Downsides? It's just not as visually impressive as some of the other things on offer. That's usually the downside when you go with a cheaper, easier method. On top of that, these doors have no weight. The smallest movement uh, at the table, whether it's someone accidentally knocking against the table or your dungeon tiles, 
is going to send all your doors falling over, probably. Now, you could add weight to this, and I considered that doing something like adding a, a washer on the bottom, um, but to me, that sort of defeats the point of simple papercraft. If you start putting in that extra next level of effort, well, then you, you might as well just move on to a product that comes out better in the end. Okay, time to move on to door number two. But while I do that, I'm going to set up the 3D printer so that it can do the real work on door number three. This door is printed from a free file from thingiverse.com. I'll link the file in the video description below. So it's below. time for me to move on to our foam door. While the printer does that, I'm going to start by cutting the base out of foam scraps. Now the base is going to be the same size as the last one, one by two inches. And we're going to use the sort of foam that you might get at the dollar store, the cheap kind for the paper backing. How you want your base to look may vary depending on your dungeon theme and setting, but since this is supposed to be just your absolute basic dungeon door, we're not going to go too crazy. Maybe we'll cover some themed doors in a different video. But for this, I'm going to bevel the edges of the foam with my hobby knife, put a few nicks and cracks in it. You can do that by taking a pen and using just the tip. Wholesome content. That's what we make. Wholesome content and doors. Doors and wholesome content. That's what we make. <sighs> I'm gonna get age restricted. For texture, I'm going to go with the old standby tinfoil ball method. If you're not familiar with that, you're really just scrunching up a lot of tinfoil and rolling it over the foam. If you're using this cheaper foam, you're going to want to make sure to press extra hard as you do it. With the base made, we're going to start cutting out the door itself. This is a simple one and a half by two inch piece of XPS foam. This is a height and width that I like for my doors personally. Now, it is important for your own sanity that you texture this before you attach it to the base. I'm using a cheap wire brush for the texture. If you're using a wire brush like this, you want to gently drag it across the foam to create texture. The harder you drag it, the more aged and decrepit the door is going to look. Now we want a little bit of that, but personally, I don't usually have antagonists that make their dungeon doors out of driftwood. Who doesn't love an evil overlord, but with serious budgetary concerns and a really nagging meister? Once the door is textured, you can add it to the base. Again, I'm using Eileen's tacky glue and I'm just kind of roughly centering the door. Once you've got it in place, you're going to need to make a frame for it. Well, that, technically you, you don't have to, but I want this door to look comparable to the other ones in style, and those doors had stone frames. So here we go. I already happen to have a bunch of pre-made bricks, but it's not much of a tutorial if I just say, go ahead and have this step done already. So I'm just quickly showing you how I make them. Take scrap material, usually XPS foam, and just cut it into roughly brick-sized pieces. Now this is going to be a different size for you than for me and probably for everyone else. It's just whatever suits your own aesthetic. Once they're cut, you're going to want to put them in a container, and then you're going to add some rocks to it. And then you're going to just shake the hell out of it. You're going to want to make sure to really piss off the neighbors with this part. You can maximize the sonic damage by doing it at about 3 a.m. Hit like and subscribe for more hot DM tips that definitely won't get you evicted. There we go. Textured bricks. No problem. You're going to want to take your new bricks and just roughly assemble them into a frame. 
around your door. There's no need to be too precious about this if you're just making a standard dungeon door. Most dungeons don't worry too much about health and safety regulations, so if it looks a bit rugged, all the better. Now there are approximately a billion options when it comes to making a door knocker, but we're still focused on keeping this as a very basic example of a dungeon door. So we're just going to use one of these little jewelry rings and a bit of construction paper. You can get these rings at dollar stores, craft stores, big box stores, they're everywhere. You're just, you're just going to put one on each side using some tacky glue and construction paper. And I use some straight pins to keep it in place just until the glue dries. Now that we're all put together, it's just a simple coat of Mod Podge and black paint to help stiffen the foam, reinforce the construction, and give us a dark base coat. If you don't have Mod Podge, you can use watered down PVA glue and black paint for this, no problem. What you probably don't want to do at this stage is use spray paint. It will eat your foam. Look, I, I know that's not always the case. Spray paint can be used on foam safely under certain conditions and at certain distances, and they do make spray paints now specifically for coating foam. I understand that. But for my money on this kind of project, Mod Podge is always a safe and solid bet. It always works, it's predictable, it does exactly what you want it to do every time. And frankly, by the time I cut and texture a piece of foam and get it shaped to be exactly what I need it to be, I don't want to take the risk of maybe spray paint eating it when I have another option that just works perfectly every time. As I said earlier, we're going to keep things pretty simple for the paint job. I'm going to start the door with a dark brown. You just want to apply this all over. Don't worry, we're going to dry brush and over brush some more color onto it a bit later. When you get to the stone frame, I just stick with a medium gray, and then I pick out a few little stones in other accent colors. I chose orange earthy colors for this, but really anything will do. Whatever suits the theme of your dungeon is fine. For foam terrain like this, I usually stick with cheap craft paints that you can get for a couple dollars at any craft or dollar store. The exact colors really, really don't matter for something like this. Once I've got it all base coated, the next step is over brushing the door with a lighter brown, just to bring the contrast up a bit. Once that's done, and the paint's dry, we're going to take a light off-white color and dry brush over the entire thing. The door, the frame, all of it. Of course, you're not going to want to forget to add a little bit of silver to the door knocker as well. Those little details really help. And lastly, you're going to apply a homemade black wash. This is just black paint, water, and a little bit of dish soap. It will help the color to sink into the cracks and give us extra contrast. Here's the finished product. Door 2 all finished, put together and ready to be tracked, locked, or bashed down by your overzealous Goliath Barbarian who thinks that he's the Kool-Aid man of the Forgotten Realms. And while I was doing all of that, door three printed. 
I cleaned the supports off of the door, cured it, and sprayed it with a rattle can brown before getting started. Now, since this door has a lot finer detail the one that, than the one that we handmade, I'm going to go ahead and use miniature paints for this one. I'm going to start with a contrast paint called Garagax Sewer. It's from the new range of contrasts. It's a nice warm brown that really suits the dungeon door. So we're just going to slather it all over, being sure to mix it around well so that it doesn't pool in places you don't want it to. Otherwise, we're following the same basic steps here. We're going to coat the stone in a medium brown, pick out a couple of other paint colors, and just color a few stones in. Once we're done that and all of the paint dry, we're going to put on a coat of silver for the hinges and door knocker, and then we're going to dry brush just as we did with the previous step covering the entire door and door frame in an off-white color. For our last step, we're going to use a black oil wash. Now, I know that I said that this is a beginner video, so to some of you, an oil wash may seem out of place, and that's fair, but I did already cover how to make the homemade wash, and in a pinch that will work for this just as well. But. I know that when I was younger and had less money to spend on my hobbies, budget was sort of the most important factor. Not skills, skills can be worked on. Budget's a little harder to finesse. And for my money, while there is a slightly higher initial output for oil washes since you have to pick up mineral spirits as well, a tube of black oil paint is going to stretch way, 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 way further than a $8 pot of null oil from Games Workshop. It's not even comparable in cost over the long run. And more than that, the oil wash looks better. It does less to tamp down the shine of your metallics. The capillary action is better. It just does everything that a wash should do better than something like null oil, and in the long run it is cheaper. So that's why we've included it in the beginner's video, but if you're not comfortable with oils, or you're just not at that skill level yet, or you don't have the money for the initial output, those homemade washes will continue to work very well on 3D printed objects or on store-bought props. So you're just going to take a little bit of oil paint and thin it with white spirits. I'm using an old Tupperware lid for my palette here, but just about anything will do. You don't, however, want to mix your palette and brushes from oil paints to acrylics or back and forth. You want brushes dedicated just for this process. So you're going to want to do this in a well-ventilated room. If you're like me, you don't have extra brain cells to spare, just do yourself a favor, open the windows up, eh? As you apply the oil wash, be sure to come back and wick away any excess that is settling or pooling in places that you don't want it. So there we are. All three doors painted up, ready to go, perfectly usable. Over dramatic YouTube glamour shots go. At the end of the day, any of these doors will work great in your dungeons. If you have access to a 3D printer, then in this case, it's a great time saver. This door cost about a dollar Canadian, and I could fit a bunch of these doors on a single build plate, then just call it a day and never have to deal with them again. But that's a high-end tool that not everyone has access to, and I promise you, if you make a foam door or a paper door and you put it down into your dungeon, your party is going to be focused on whether it's locked, whether it's trapped, and what that god-awful smell coming from the other side is. Not how you made it. So that wraps up our first Dungeon Basics video. Thanks for watching, folks. If you could go ahead and hit all the little buttons down there that get the algorithm all excited, that would be great. It would really help the channel, as well as balloon my ego to truly terrifying new heights. So forward to that in future videos. If you have your own method for making doors, let me know in the comments because we might actually revisit this for future videos to cover different themes or different methods. Or if you've got some other 
topic you'd like me to cover for Dungeon Basics, let me know that too. Thanks. And I'll see you in the next one.